Hello, I'm Joe with E38 Survey Solutions, and welcome to the MLED Reach uh, Getting Started video. Uh, so today we'll take it from the very first firmware update um, and then go through some of the base and the rover settings. Um, right now I have it plugged into a charger, um, but if you have uh, anything close to a full charge, you can run the update without being on charge. Uh, but my battery is obviously very low. So we'll start by turning on the RS2. We'll hold down the power button for a few seconds. And this will take, oh, 10, 15 seconds um, before it's fully powered on. Okay, so we are powered on here um, all the way through the cycle. You'll notice the LED to the left of the power button is white. That tells us that the Reach RS2 is broadcasting its own Wi-Fi. So we're going to connect to that um, on our Android or iOS device. So we'll search for Reach. Here it is, F9-0A, colon 0A. Uh, the password's going to be MLID Reach. And we're going to go ahead and connect to that. And we'll just we'll see in just a few moments. Uh, my version of Android gives me a pop up here asking me if I want to stay connected to this internet. Okay, so this network has no internet access. So the RS2 isn't connected to the internet. It's broadcasting its own Wi-Fi, and we do want to stay connected to that network. So we'll say yes. Okay, great. Now we can enter the Reach View 3 application. And there it says Reach is not set up yet or for firmware is outdated. And we'll press this Set Up Reach button. And now we'll need to add a Wi-Fi network. So the, the best thing to do is if you're going to use this as a network rover, just set it up initially on your the hotspot you'll bring out. And if you're if you're just using it a basin rover with no internet, that's fine. You can set it up with your home Wi-Fi network. Um, but every time we power on the RS2, it's going to search for a network. Um, so for that reason, if you've if you're connected to both your hotspot at one point and your home network at one point and you're at home testing, you're not going to know. It's going to be, I, I guess it'll be kind of troublesome to decide or to figure out which network you're connected to. So again, um, if you're using this as a network rover and you're going to use Wi-Fi at some point, just connect to your hotspot right now. So that's what I'll do. And I'm going to, my network name is Joe Hotspot. Uh, and capitalization and spacing matters, of course. Um, and I take that back. My network name is actually Joe Phone. And my password is Joe Hotspot. All right, great. We'll save that. And the next thing we'll do is we'll tap Joe phone again, and we'll press connect. Now the RS2 is the LED to the left of the power button. You can see there it's, it's blinking blue. It's searching for that Joe hotspot. Um, and then on the tablet says reach is connected to another network. Switch to Joe phone to continue. Okay, so we have a solid blue LED to the left of the power button that tells us the RS2 is connected to the Joe phone network. Now in order for this tablet to again communicate with the RS2, we need to connect the tablet to that same network. So I'm going to connect my tablet to the Joe phone network. There we are, connected, great. And we'll go back to reach view 3. So now I'm going to press back and it's refreshing. Great. 
And again, we get the same message, reach is not set up yet or firm firmware is outdated. So we'll press re set up reach again. And this time you'll see we have the check for Wi-Fi and the check for time sync. Um, so now I'm gonna press this update reach view button and it'll take, oh, seven to 10 minutes. Okay, so here we are about five minutes later and it's just finishing up. Uh, so it just reached 100% and now it's going through and saying it's installing reach view 226.0. Um, so once it finishes up here in the next few seconds, we'll press that uh, reboot and go to the app button. And just like it sounds, the RS2 is going to reboot itself. And what, what it'll do is on reboot, and every, every time we power it on from now on, it's going to search for my Joe phone hotspot. Um, and if, it, if my hotspot is on and it finds it, great. Uh, it'll connect to it and it will then have internet access. Um, and if it doesn't connect to it, it will turn solid white. And again, it'll be broadcasting its own Wi-Fi. Um, so in order to communicate with the Re Reach RS2 at that point, we would go to our Wi-Fi settings and connect to that Reach Wi-Fi. So here, just in a minute or two, we should be able to uh, reboot the app. Okay, so let's press reboot and go to the app. You can see reboot will start in one second. And there you see the RS2 uh, powering off and it should power itself right back on. There it goes. Um, so in the next uh, 20 seconds, it'll go through its in initialization and it'll look for that hotspot. All right, so after a couple minutes, uh, there we have it, the RS2 restarted itself solid blue light to the left of the power button indicating we're connected to our hotspot and I'm going to press back on the application and it should reconnect itself to the receiver here um, so there it goes connected right up uh, so let's jump in and and set this up as if it was going to be a base station so in settings we'll start with GNSS settings All right, oh, we can agree, accept. Um, so for a base station, our positioning mode, we're gonna set this up as a static receiver. Uh, we'll just leave the defaults there. Um, and press apply. And for the update rate for our base, we'll use one hertz. Press apply there. And now we'll press this X button. That's all we wanted to do in GNSS settings. And the correction input, uh, this is our base. We're not gonna get any corrections to our base. We're gonna send corrections out from our base. So I'm just gonna turn this off. And we'll go back. Uh, correction output, we will send messages out. Um, and we're gonna wanna send this over lower radio. And you can see here it says too many RTCM3 messages. That's kind of a typo, um, so there's, there's a way around this. Um, but for now, I just want to flip that to LoRa. So we will go into this GNSS settings. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to base mode. So um, we'll, we'll start with base mode here. So coordinate input mode, uh, we want to uh, either average a single position and that'll take an average over two minutes period of time or we can average a float position if we're connected to another base or average a fixed position again with another base corrections or we can type in a manual coordinate so for us we'll just use average single that's fine and this is that uh, too many messages uh, me message we, we received is because of this RTCM3 messages um, and really it's it's kind of a glitch that they uh, are fixing here shortly. Uh, but for now, let's just turn these off so we don't see that message. 
Uh, but in any case, you can keep all these constellations on. That'll be great. Uh, just let us know um, if you run into that issue, and we will show you the workaround. So for base station, our correction output, we're going to send this to um, another RS2. We're going to send that over lower radio. That's the internal radio there. All right. And our base, position streaming number one. We're not streaming any position here. And position streaming number two. Again, we don't need to stream any position for a, a standard base rover setup. Um, so that's it. Um, really, what we needed to do was go to GNSS settings, set it to static, um, make sure our base mode, the coordinate acquisition is what we want for our application, and set our correction mode to LoRa. Um, the other thing I'll note uh, on, on correction output, uh, take a note of the of frequency there. So we have it set to 902. Our rover is going to be need to set to 902 as well. Okay. Now let's go back and we'll say, okay, we want to set this up as a rover. So we will go into GNSS settings. And rather than static, we're going to set this to kinematic and apply that. And we're also going to increase this update rate to 5 hertz. Okay. So let's assume we are getting our corrections from a base station, that same base station. So we want our corrections over lower radio. Um, and we'll have to turn that off on output. So, we're a rover, we're not sending any correction output out, so we can turn that off, oh, excuse me, and back to correction input, we will turn that to low rut, and again, it needs to be that same as the base, uh, which is 902 megahertz in this scenario. So now we have a rover that's getting in kinematic mode and getting corrections from the lower radio. Um, so that's, that's really it. If we're going to survey with the ReachView 3 app, um, you might run into a situation where you want to use another application, whether that's uh, Field Genius for Android or Field Genius for Windows or Carlson or, or one of these other uh, applications or data collectors. And for that, we'd want to set positioning stream uh, to the correct form. Um, in a lot of cases, that'll be Bluetooth. In some cases, the Bluetooth will be NEMA stream. In the other cases, maybe ERB. Um, but in any case, for our purposes, we're all set up with this rover to work with the base. Uh, so let's show you what it looks like uh, to start a new survey. So we'll press the Add button to start a new project, Project 16. A uh, coordinate system, uh, there's uh, basically every coordinate system you could want. Uh, for me, I'm here in the north side of Ohio, northeastern Ohio, so I'm going to use Ohio North in survey feet. And we, I'll use Geoid 12B. Uh, Geoid 18 is available as well. Um, so we can save that. And, and there, there's our new project. Uh, and you can see from here I can add um, a measured point once I'm actually receiving corrections. Uh, now obviously I have no, no base station connect to it at, the t at this moment. So let's jump back to receivers and let's show you one more thing, one more setup here. And I want to show you... Um, basically the network rover setup. Um, so still our GNSS settings will be to kinematic mode and our correction input will just change. Uh, this is going to be ntrip. So let's choose ntrip and let's add a new profile. Uh, this can be 0.2 and the address will be, this is uh, the address provided by my entry provider here, which is O dot one five six six three and my port two one zero one. And once you have the right port and address in, uh, you should be able to select a mount point. So I'm going down a mount point. Gives me 
some grayed out options, but two options here. Um, and mount points are going to be different depending on your provider. Um, I'd say the big thing is we want a mount point that provides RTCM3 messages. Um, for me, uh, the mount point I'll choose is this this top one um, because that's sending me RTCM3 messages to a VRS network, and this is full constellations. So I'll use that. So great. Um, and then I could type my username and password, and that's when it'll start feeding you corrections. But what I want to show you here is okay. Once you have the, if you have the correct ad address and port, then it's going to show you mount points. If you don't, it won't show you any mount points, and you know you need to go back and and, and figure out something you, uh, you know, some something you fat fingered. So the other thing, send receivers position to the provider on the very bottom. Um, if you're on a VRS network. Um, you want to make sure that's slid to the right here. Um, I believe you can leave it on all the time, uh, whether VRS or whether you're a uh, single baseline system. Um, so, uh, you know, e either way um, for single baseline systems. And we'll save that. Uh, so there you can see, waiting for corrections. We're on the NTRIM network. Um, and I don't have a username and password, so I'm not going to get any corrections there. Uh, but that's okay. Um, so that's. Those are the basic settings um, for base, uh, a base rover setup and the network rover setup. Um, there's, like I said, there's a lot of other little things in here and maybe some different things uh, you might want to get into. Um, and one thing before we go is what I've shown you is PPP or um, if you want to process data with Opus, we could do that. So we would go to, we'll tap on reach at the very top here and go to reach panel. And let's go to, I'm going to these little four horizontal bars in the upper right. And we're gonna go to logging. And here we'll set raw data logging. So for Opus, I'm going to set this to Rhinox uh, 2.11. Uh, we could use, um, Opus can take Rhinox 3, but I believe last time I tried with, with this Reach, uh, the Rhinox 3 version was incompatible for some reason, uh, but the 2 version works great. Uh, so we'll use Rhinox 2.11. Opus only uses GPS L1 and L2, so that's all we'll need to check. Um, adding these other constellations doesn't help us at all uh, with Opus and obviously logging interval uh, one second is fine I think we could leave Opus might even do 30 seconds um, but one second is fine that file is going to be small enough Opus will take it and it'll work just fine uh, we can check this box for automatically starting uh, when receiver is turned on sounds fine we'll apply that so that looks great and let's go back to our reach view app all right, so okay, okay, now I think I've gone through everything I want. We went through uh, the base setup, which again was just setting up the settings so that it was a static receiver, setting a correction output to lower radio. Uh, then we took the rover and we set that to receive our base corrections. Um, so correction input was set to lower radio and we we're good to go. Um, as well as the GNS settings, we set the, the positioning mode to kinematic. And for our uh, network rover setup, we set correction input to NTRIP, and from there we're good to go. Uh, for any other application specific questions, anything along those lines, just give us a shout. We'd be happy to help, um, but thanks for watching.